Pokemon lovers and welcome to a brand new episode of Raging All Pokemon. We are still in the Sinnoh region. It is taking a long time, but that's okay because that means that there's more content for you every week. No, not every week. In total. Whatever. It's time to rate some more Pokemon and today we're starting out with number 446, Munchlax. Munchlax is a very... Munchlax? Munchlax. Could also have been its name. Munchlax is the pre-evolution of Snorlax introduced in Region 4. It evolves into Snorlax when it's leveled up with high friendship and uh, in general it's pretty cute. I remember it being one of the first Pokemon that was announced for that for that generation. I'm not actually sure, but it's the first Pokemon I remember from that generation anyway, so that's cool. Munchlax is a tiny fat little boy. It is one of the heaviest baby Pokemon. No, it is the heaviest baby Pokemon with like 105 kilos. It eats all day, just like Snorlax. It has to eat at least its own weight in food every single day or more. And what it does is it hides its food under its fur because um, this little fat body is full of fur and um, it's a long haired Pokemon, which I never realized. But now I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course it is. Anyway, it hides its food in its fur and then it forgets about the food that it hid in its fur because it's too busy eating other things. Nothing is specified about this like any further. Doesn't that food start rotting at some point? Um, I guess Munchlax is not only a fat Pokemon, but also a smelly Pokemon. Munchlax pretty much eats nearly everything. It doesn't really care about flavor. Uh, it can swallow anything whole. It doesn't really chew. Does it even have teeth? Probably not because it's a baby. Pokemon Moon says when it finds something that looks like it might be edible, it goes right ahead and swallows it whole. That's why it gets fatter day by day. And uh, then it evolves into Snorlax, which is huge and enjoys to block rivers. Munchlax is pretty much based on a baby bear, which um, collects collect food before they start hibernating. Um, doesn't really look like a bear though. Another thing that resembles a bear is the fact that it's found around honey trees and bears like honey. So that's what Munchlax is all about. Its name comes from Munch and Relax or Lax, but also um, Snorlax. I give Munchlax a 5 out of 5 because I think it is one of the cuter baby Pokemon and also it likes food and who doesn't like food? Everyone likes food. Next up is number 447, Riolu. Now Riolu is uh, another baby Pokemon. At least it is classified as a baby Pokemon. I don't think it needs to be a baby Pokemon, but it is, so... Um, Riolu is the aura Pokemon and the reason for that is that it is able to sense auras around people. Um, auras are of course like something that, res that is around your body that resembles your mood or how you feel, how you truly feel, not how you pretend to feel. Riolu is a fighting Pokemon, which means it has almost superhuman strength. It is a very strong Pokemon. Um, it's a good fighter, obviously. And it is able to make very, very long journeys on foot. And like most baby Pokemon, it is still pretty playful. Um, it's very loyal. It kind of resembles a dog. So loyalty, sorry, I slapped the mic. Loyalty is obviously a big part of it. Like I mentioned about the auras, it is able to see the emotions or feel Feel the emotions even um, of other Pokemon and people and I always think that's a very cool skill to have. I wish humans had that skill more. Now Riolu seems to be physically based on the Egyptian god Anubis. Anubis is the god of death and um, it is usually depicted or it's always depicted with the head of a dog just like Riolu. Also I feel like its appearance is does look kind of Egyptian so I find this very plausible. But it also looks a tiny 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 little bit like a raccoon because of its little face mask and I think that is also very cute. I give Riolu a 4 out of 5. When you level up Riolu with high friendship during the day it will evolve into Lucario. Now Lucario is a fan favorite. It is a very cool Pokemon. It has a very sick mega evolution. Um, it is the first mega evolution that you get introduced to in the X and Y games. I really like the look of it. Now, Lucario is also an aura Pokemon, but Lucario is way more advanced in its uh, aura reading. It's a very peaceful and loyal Pokemon. It is able to sense its human's emotions so that um, it will be able to console the human if sadness is 
there if sadness is there. Now, Lucario can not only read auras, but it can also use auras in an offensive manner. It can make spheres or um, energy balls kind of out of the auras to shoot them at other Pokemon. I think that's a very, very cool quality of Lucario and um, interesting. Pokemon Moon says about its mega evolution, it readies itself to face its enemies by focusing its mental energies. Its fighting style can be summed up in a single word, heartless. I don't know, that just sounds pretty badass. <laughs> now, Lucario is also based on Anubis, the Egyptian god of death. Now, the reason for this is that Anubis was able to judge the, um, the souls of people that had been deceased on whether they had been good or bad in their lives. And that kind of resembles the fact that Lucario can read auras and judge people on that. Another thing it might be based on is an Egyptian boxer. Apparently, boxing is a sport that originated in Egypt, and I didn't even know that. It has a little mask and you know, it could resemble a boxer. It's a fighting Pokemon. I totally see it. I give Lucario a 5 out of 5, and I'm now realizing that is the only Pokemon amiibo I don't have, and that is kind of sad. Shit. Next up is Pokemon number 449, Hippopotas. Now, um, in the anime, it is pronounced Hippopotas, but that just sounds really dumb to me, so I'm just gonna go with uh, Hippopotas, which I just googled. Hippopotas. Now, Hippopotas is a ground Pokemon. It is a hippo-like Pokemon. It does really, really resemble a hippo. They didn't really go out of their way to make it look any different in this, apart from the fact that it doesn't live in water. Actually, it doesn't really like water at all. It lives in sand. It even sweats sand. There is not an inch of liquid inside Hippopotas' body. It um, buries itself in the sand to protect itself from enemies and while it buries itself in the sand it closes its nostrils to not get sand inside its body, which is weird because it sweats sand, so why would it be bad to have sand inside its body? I don't really know. A fun thing about Hippopotas is that it is one of the only Pokemon that has really, really significant gender differences. They have a very different color scheme. The female is a very dark color and the male is like the inverted version of that, which is a pretty light color. And I got confused by that once and I thought I found shiny, but I didn't. It was just a female. That made my camera move, oh. Hippopotas is obviously based on a hippo, like I said before, but it might also be based on the Bahamut, which is a legendary being that in some cultures apparently has the head of a hippo and lives under the sand. Hippopotas is one of those Pokemon I keep forgetting about, you know, I talk about those all the time. I just, just some Pokemon that don't leave an impression to me, but I kind of actually like it, so I'm gonna give it a five out of five. Now at level 34, Hippopotas evolves into Hippowdon. Now Hippowdon is a very badass looking hippo. I I was like looking at pictures of it and I was like, damn, why did I forget about these Pokemon? Because this is really cool looking. It is a giant hippo Pokemon with huge claws. It is another sand boy. It is short tempered and it has really, really strong jaws that could crunch a car. Why the hell not? It stores sand inside its body and it makes huge twisters out of that sand to attack Pokemon. I think that's very cool. Pokemon Pearl says its huge mouth is almost seven feet across. It has enough power to completely crush a car. Seven feet across? X fucking cues me. How big is this Pokemon? That is two foot bigger than me. What? No, no, no. Nah. Okay, I, I don't know how big this thing is, but that is insane. I'm not buying it. What the fuck, Pokemon Pearl? Hippowdon also has these huge gender differences. The male is a sandy color and the female is dark gray for some reason. It is also based on a hippo and it is also based on the Bahamut. And that is pretty much all I can say about it. Hippowdon's name comes from hippopotamus, as in um, a hippo. It comes from power, it comes from pow, and it comes from don, which is Spanish for lord and ancient Greek for tooth or teeth. And um, that makes a lot of sense, actually. I'm gonna give Hippowdon a five out of five. I'm actually very, very impressed by this boy and its strength and how big its fucking jaws are. Seven foot? I'm out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a really great time. I hope you learned something new. If you're one of these people who also forgot about Hippopotas and Hippowdon, 
please let me know. Tell me I'm not alone. Um, because it always makes me feel bad. Uh, maybe it's your favorite Pokemon and I just completely destroyed your life. I gave them pretty high marks, so hey, doesn't matter. Have a really good week and I'll see you again next week. And don't forget to subscribe and all the other things that you should do on YouTube. Um, whatever. Goodbye. <laughs>